Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qatabiya Palace. The cabinet directed government agencies to follow up on the recommendations in the National Audit Office, the NAO's annual report 2020 to 21, and take the necessary measures to develop the management of public funds as well as their administrative and financial performance. The cabinet decided to refer the report to the government executive committee to supervise the application of the recommendations contained therein in accordance with the mechanism followed during the review of previous reports of the NAO. The Cabinet expressed its thanks to all ministries and government agencies that did not draw any substantive observations in this year's report, highlighting the role played by NAO in strengthening governments uh, to achieve correct practices in this field. The cabinet announced that the kingdom aims to reach net zero emissions by the year 2060 in order to face the challenges of climate change and protect the environment. The cabinet welcomed the launch of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's first package of Green Saudi Arabia initiatives under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The cabinet also welcomed the announcements made by His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, that Saudi Arabia Arabia will reduce and reach net zero emissions by the year 2060 through a circular carbon economy approach. The cabinet stressed the importance of these initiatives and their objectives in protecting the environment and facing the challenges of climate change. The cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting and approved of the following memorandums. Memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding several MOUs and an execution plan between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates, which aims to further strengthen bilateral cooperation. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a request by the Supreme Council for the Environment to join an agreement on the establishment of the Global Green Growth Institute, which aims to promote promote sustainable development and improve economic, environmental and social conditions through international partnerships between the public and private sectors. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on pledges related to health and climate change, which are in line with the Kingdom of Bahrain's international commitments and steps towards achieving an active role in climate action and the further development of the national health system. A memorandum by the Minister of Finance and National Economy on the National Gender Balance report 2019 to 2020 prepared by the Supreme Council for Women. The report aims to measure the effectiveness and impact of policies and legislation in achieving the national plan for the further advancement of Bahraini women and strengthening the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a center of international expertise in women's affairs. The report revealed that the Kingdom's overall gender balance index for the years 2019 to 2020 increased to 69% reaching 73% in key areas reviewed. Institutional performance index reached 65% with an increase in participation of women in specialized jobs, the legislative authority, commercial activity and representation in boards of directors and committees. A memorandum by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism of the Kingdom of Bahrain's Tourism Strategy 2022-26. to The strategy aims to highlight the Kingdom's status as a global tourism center. The inc this includes increasing the tourism sector's contribution to the GDP and and diversifying tourism through several initiatives and projects. The strategy intends to enhance tourist attractions, accommodation and investment opportunities in the Kingdom. A memorandum by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority regarding the annual report of the Education and Training Quality Authority for 2021. The report outlines the performance of education and training institutions after applying exceptional frameworks for evaluation during the global COVID-19 pandemic. A memorandum on digital policies that aim to enhance e-government services and facilities for their use for business development.
A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to a law proposal submitted by the Shura Council. The cabinet then took note of the ministerial reports, including the ministerial conference to support stability in Libya, the annual meetings of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund, and the outcomes of the 22nd meeting of GCC Ministerial Committee of following up on the implementation of the GCC joint work decisions. The cabinet also reviewed the outcomes of the Kingdom of Bahrain's hosting of the 7th meeting of the GCC Ministers of Health Committee and the 84th GCC Health Ministers General Conference and participation in several meetings and discussions of Ministers of Trade and Industry of the GCC countries were reviewed. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Ashana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that Paris FC's draw with Toulouse 2 is a positive result considering the fact that their opponent is one of the strongest team and a fierce competitor. His Highness stated that Paris FC is on the verge of an important stage that requires redoubling efforts in order to achieve positive results. He wished the team continued success and good luck in the upcoming matches. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahanat Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, is leading Bahrain's delegation to the General Assembly of the Association of International National Olympic Committee, the ANOC, which is held in the Greek island Crete. His Highness has arrived in Greece accompanied by a delegation comprising the Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Mohammed Al Nasaf, met with the President of the International Olympic Committee, Dr. Thomas Bach, His Highness praised the efforts made by the International Olympic Committee to advance the Olympic movements in various countries of the world, affirming the keenness of the Bahrain Olympic Committee to work hand-in-hand -hand with the International Olympic Committee to achieve principles and values of the Olympics and positive interaction with its various initiatives and programs adopted by the International Olympic Committee. His Highness Sheikh Khalid discussed with the Bach the latest developments related to the Olympic work and discussed with the means of bilateral cooperation on various topics of concern to both parties, praising the efforts made by the International Olympic Committee to confront the corona pandemic, COVID-19 and the measures it took by postponing the Tokyo Olympics from a year to 2020 to 21, which led to the success of the Tokyo 2020. For his part, the President of the International Olympic Committee expressed his appreciation for the great efforts made by the Bahrain Olympic Committee in implementing various programs, activities and events which are in harmony with the objectives of the Olympic movements praising the achievements of the Bahrain Olympic Committee headed by His Highness Sheikh Khalid at the Olympic and global levels. On the sidelines of His Highness Sheikh Khalid's visit to Greek island, the Bahrain Olympic Committee signed a joint memorandum of cooperation with the Russian Olympic Committee with the aim of developing bilateral cooperation between the two parties in the sports field. The memorandum was signed by His Highness Sheikh Khalid and the President of the Russian Olympic Committee. The memorandum with the Russian side includes developing effective bilateral cooperation and working together to promote the principles and values of the Olympic movement. It provides for the development of high sports performance and cooperation in combating sports discrimination in all its forms, promoting the values of fair play, exchanging expertise and experiences in sports scientists and technical aspects, the participation of sports teams in bilateral competitions, exchanging technical and medical staff, exchanging information and consultations in all sports sciences, exchanging invitations to participate in conferences and seminars and courses. It also includes the organization of training camps in both countries for sports teams and the exchange of official visits provided that the memorandum will enter into force from the date of its signing until December the 31st 2025. On this occasion His Highness expressed pleasure at signing that memorandum with the Russian Olympic Committee which aims to strengthen bilateral cooperation in various sports aspects in a way that achieves the common interests of both parties in this field noting the distinguished position and achievements of Russia sports at the Olympic level in various Olympic 
Games. His Highness stressed that this memorandum comes within the framework of the Bahrain Olympic Committee's keenness to open up to various national Olympic committees in the world to exchange expertise and achieve the greatest benefit at the technical and administrative levels. His Highness explained that this memorandum expresses the extent of the Bahrain Olympic Committee's continued keenness to advance administrative and technical work to reflect positively on the promotion of Bahraini sports, expressing his thanks and appreciation to the Russian Olympic Committee, wishing the cooperation to achieve common goals and objectives for both parties. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahani Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the president of the Spanish Olympic Committee, Alejandro Blanco Bravo, in the presence of the secretary general of the Olympic Committee, Mohamed Al Nasif, on the sidelines of His Highness's visit to Red to attend the meeting of the General Assembly of the Association of International National Olympic Committees, the ANOC. His Highness welcomed the president Bravo and reviewed with him means of bolstering bilateral relations in the fields of sports in line with the protocol signed between the Bahraini and Spanish Olympic Committees in 2019. His Highness reviewed the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and Spain through the exchange of expertise. He also praised the advanced level of Spanish sports, affirming the importance of cooperation to benefit from their expertise. His Highness wished the Spanish Olympic Committee further progress and success. For his part, President Bravo expressed a pride in the deep-rooted relations between the Spanish and Bahraini Olympic Committees, noting the Kingdom's efforts to support sports globally and its keenness on implementing numerous programs that are in line with Olympic values. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Hamedan, chaired the 76th session of the Executive Office of the Council of Arab Ministers of Social Affairs, the CAMSA, held in Jordan. He stressed the importance of strengthening joint Arab social development work, expressing the Council's keenness to achieve social goals within the 2030 Sustainable Development Plan, despite the difficulties posed by COVID-19 pandemic. The meeting reviewed initiatives and strategies to reduce social and humanitarian repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic and highlighted the efforts made by Bahrain to protect all members of society from its negative impact and its keenness to continue providing health and social services to citizens and residents. For the 15th year in a row, the Labour Fund Temkin, in strategic collaboration with the Bahrain Society for Technology Companies, BTEC, and WorkSmart for Events Management, has organized the Kingdom's annual participation at JITEX. This year's participation, which ended on Thursday, included the Economic Development Board, 20 startup companies, three universities, the Benefit Company, and major sponsorship from Alba and Betelco. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Director of Partnership and Customer Engagement at Tamkin, Mr. Assam Hamad. Hello, Mr. Assam. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the outcomes of the Bahrain Pavilion in Jitex? Hello, good evening. Um, as you've uh, rightly mentioned, uh, Tamkin, the Bahrain Labor Fund, has been supporting the participation of Bahrain as a national pavilion uh, for the past 15 years. Jitex is one of the biggest information technology uh, exhibitions and conferences uh, in the world. Therefore, we are keen on having Bahrain's presence amongst uh, countries from all, all corners of the globe. Uh, this year, we had around 16 uh, SMEs participate in Bahrain's pavilion and around 20 startups that took part um, in the uh, startup pavilion this year. Um, of course, uh, most of our participants were able to sign uh, deals with counterparts from various countries. And uh, this is an industry that Tenkin is keen on developing, uh, given the importance of digital transformation on the productivity, uh, efficiency and scalability of uh, companies uh, as part of all sectors. Mm -hmm. And how does this participation open more doors for cooperation, especially that uh, we are now more into physical events rather than the virtual? Yes. Um, so we actually supported the participation uh, during the pandemic last year and this year the, uh, the event actually went on and uh, the importance of attending these uh, in-person events we believe is uh, quite strategic in terms of forming new relationships between companies and their counterparts 
within the region and internationally as well. Um, as you know, uh, during the past couple of years, um, most uh, business uh, relationships have been maintained through virtual means. However, in terms of opening new doors, establishing new relationships and exploring new opportunities, we feel that it's still quite imperative that these in-person events uh, take place and therefore we are very keen on sending a Bahraini delegation to re-establish their connection uh, with the industry in the region and globally as well. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. And that was the Director of Partnerships and Customer Engagement at Temkin, Mr. Asam Hamad. Thank you for joining us. The Bahraini Farmers Market returns in its ninth edition in the Budaya Botanical Garden in December following a one-year hiatus caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The annual event is organized by the Agricultural and Marine Resources AMR at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning in partnership with the National Initiative for Agricultural Development. AMR called on all companies and individuals, farmers and exhibitors wishing to participate to submit their applications for registration before the deadline. The market has become an important event on the national activity calendar in Bahrain and it provides significant support to the agricultural sector thanks to its status as a platform for marketing local agricultural produce. Meanwhile, the national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,172,869 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,137,010 had taken the second, and 426,113 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 660 with 55 recoveries and 65 registered new cases. 20 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 36 are contact of active cases and 9 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.